Hi, everybody. Welcome to the overview of data story. This is about how you transform data into action. So many roles today, 67% of roles, PwC says, have um, analytics enabled. That means people have to do their real job and piled on top of that now is also the, the chore of having to communicate data. So in a career, if you're in a fully analytical career, uh, there's it's kind of three steps really of advancement. You explore the data, you dig in, you analyze the data. Once you analyze the data and you dig in, one of two things happen. You either found a problem or an opportunity. And at that point, you have a communications problem. And that's why this course is really about explaining data. If you become really good at explaining data, what happens is you become a strategic advisor to your team and to your leadership. And then ultimately, once you get that kind of exposure, people will start to ask you to influence and lead. But this gap between exploring data and explaining data is like a chasm in a career at times. And this course addresses that by teaching you how to explain data and not just explore it. So that gap is big. When you're exploring data, your brain is engaged in very analytical process, but to communicate it and explain it is actually a creative process. So even though one proves a point, the other will move others to action and help you solve the problem or opportunity that you found in the data. So we're gonna move from data uh, to action in this course. So first, you're gonna synthesize a data set. I created a case of a fake uh, cacao, cocoa producer, um, and it's a really great case. It's uh, De La Vega chocolate, De La Vega cocoa. And there is a set of charts that you're going to synthesize and you're going to find a problem and or an opportunity and you're going to work with a team and you're going to make a recommendation based on what the data is telling you to do as you synthesize it. The next step you're going to do is you're going to start to figure out what just happened. You were just handed a set of charts. You could skim them quickly and you could come to conclusions from it. A lot of it's about how the documents themselves, the recommendations, the data sets themselves were given to you. So first, you're going to learn how to write really clear chart titles. And that's the how, when, and what the measurement happens. And that's based on data that are nouns. A noun is a person, place, or thing, and an idea that's measured. So that is the same as a noun. So your chart title needs to be the noun and how it's measured, measured and that's it. Nothing else. It's just a clean, clear set of data. Then, what you're going to do is the next step is you're going to write observations. So on top of the chart title, you're going to make some observations and you're going to be taught how to make observable insights about the data itself. And part of that requires you have to understand the context from which you're coming and approaching the data, but also the context under which the audience is going to be processing the data. So this course also is just loaded with empathy, which is really important when you're processing uh, information. We also found after studying thousands of slides that everyone understands three basic charts. It's a bar, a pie, and a line. And what we give you is the vocabulary to describe insights based on adverbs and adjectives used to describe these, these three types of charts. So your observations are very, very crisp and very, very clear. The next phase is that uh, you may have to talk to and uh, empathize with executives. Because a lot of times when you're digging through the data, you're crafting a recommendation for someone above you to approve most of the time. Because a lot of problems or opportunities we find in data are going to probably possibly cost money or time, or it's going to be a commitment the organization is going to have to make. So we have some tools for you to be able to understand your audience. You're either uh, persuading your peers you can speak your shorthand, or you're inspiring people to action. It might be a broader set of stakeholders. You might be persuading your manager, or you might be persuading executives. You need to empathetically, we give you tools to empathetically understand who you're communicating to. But then we remind you, when we gave you the case, your audience in the De La Vega case study was Daniela De La Vega herself. And she loves everything in a slide doc format. She likes to skim it quickly, and she likes to process information really quickly. So you are challenged in this workshop to build an amazing recommendation so it's really clear to Daniela what she needs to do as her next step. An executive 
that you will learn is measured by three things. An executive's top concerns are money, market, and exposure. That's it. At the executive table, if you're writing a recommendation and it's going to scoot its way up the organization, it'll speed up communication up and down the organization if you understand how executives process information. So an executive has to drive up money. They drive up revenue and profit. They drive up market by increasing market share, and they drive up exposure by increasing retention of clients, employees, and partners. But they also have to drive down costs. They have to drive down our time to market, and they have to drive down risk. If you write and craft your recommendation in a way that appeals to any of these things, it will get the eye of the executive. They will be able to process it quickly and make decisions faster. Next, we'll actually unpack the process of developing the recommendation itself because recommendations are going to require that someone take action. So one of the most important things we discovered when we analyzed all of the work of the highest performing brands in the world is the actual verb choices. The verbs create action. And so we have this amazing way for you to understand the right kinds of verbs to attach to the right kinds of audiences. Sometimes you're asking people to change. Like we need to change who we are or what we're doing. Some of the verbs you're asking people to continue. Hey, keep going. Keep going in the same direction. And some of the verbs you're asking people to complete something, that we need to complete this, even if it means we need to concede failure. So in the course, you get this fantastic, it's, some people say it's like crack, but it's this fantastic way to understand the right type of verbs with the right energy that would appeal uh, to the executive suite or to managers or to peers, whoever it is that you're communicating to. So in this course, you also write a big idea. It takes a different shape because you're doing it on, in service of explaining a recommendation. So it has a point of view and what's at stake, but it might look like this. I recommend, this is your point of view, is your recommendation. I recommend that we need to divest our services division immediately and what's at stake or we're going to burn through too much cash. That's as simple as the big idea can be for your recommendation. And then if you move into writing an entire summary, you're going to use story thinking. Um, we have these really beautiful job aids that are these maps, and you map things out. Uh, we love sticky notes, so you, you do a lot of that. Um, and we have ways to solve in the virtual world as well. So we write an executive summary in the form of a story. And again, you'll see us pull on the three-act structure, because story structure, the three-act structure is a fantastic way to structure narrative. And it has a beginning, a middle, and an end, an act one, an act two, and act three. So it goes something like this. Your executive summary written in the shape of a story is there's a problem or opportunity that we've identified in the data. The messy middle is it's messy to proceed because the data is presenting problems or opportunities. And ultimately, the recommendation I'm making is going to address the problem at its root cause, creating a solution with positive outcomes. So you, we'll teach you to shape an executive summary in a three-act structure like this. And then once you have that structure, you've got to support it with supporting points that make logical sense and are skimmable and easy to process. So decision makers really have a lot of respect for structure. So if you have your um, executive summary, everything should hang off of that. You should be making points with supporting points that support it. Um, here's an example of the job aid. And what happens is your supporting point all needs to have what? why and how. So once you know what the action is, what do we need to do? Why do we need to do and how? A lot of times we forget why. We call that the persuasion layer. Sometimes we just say what, how, what, how, what, how all day in business without explaining and unpacking why we're asking people to take that action. And so it's, we're stating how this whole thing resolves. We're stating what the recommendation is and then creating supporting evidence to it. And then we, re we turn back to this um, case study that we did for De La Vega. And then you work with a partner on structuring that recommendation in the shape of a story. It looks a bit like this. So you have your recommendation, you state what, and then you come up with a bunch of why and how uh, using our tools. But you also have to consider the alternative perspective. Most people, the whole time you're asking them to take action are forming a counteraction in their head or a reason why they shouldn't do it. And you have to consider all of those alternative perspectives and even alternative data. Um, people are going to say, well, maybe you didn't check this data source, that data source. You need to check alternative data sources and consider alternative perspectives also. And then we teach you how to make data stick. And uh, using the element of time is kind of fun to make data stick. If you reveal data over time, you can surprise people by revealing a piece of data uh, that was 
not expected, and that can create a sense of surprise. What's cool is all of these tools uh, can be used in your recommendation and in your stand and deliver presentations also. Another thing you could do is make it human. You know, there were humans that made the numbers go up and humans that made the numbers go down. Who were those humans? And can you talk to them about what it is they did and how to get them to reverse their actions so that you can get the kind of outcomes from the data that you need, or just show a picture of some of the humans that made the numbers go up or down. And then there's marveling at the magnitude. How do you find things familiar and relatable and connect the data to these very relatable things like scale or speed or time? We connect data, some of these big data and tiny bit, bitty bits of sub subatomic bits of data, we really, uh, by connecting it to something that we already are familiar with in our real world, we can get the scale of the data and then we can marvel at its magnitude. So then what you do is you overlay annotations over your data. This was fun because we dug into all of the work that we had done for these high-performing brands, came up with a taxonomy for annotations. It's just stunning. So often we just plot our charts in whatever software we plot our charts in. There's a whole nother narrative that we need to overlay kind of manually on top of everything so we make it really clear what we're wanting our audience to walk away from in the data. Um, and it might look something like this, where you just have a plain old chart plotted. You can highlight the part that's the most important, annotate it, actually add a layer of information on top of it that your software, the plotting software can't do. And then you make a very clear observation about that data. And so we'll walk through multiple types of ways to amplify your data visually by amplifying gaps, finding patterns, anomalies, and then sometimes you overlay additional math to show like the size of the gaps between numbers and stuff like that. So really powerful section for that. And then ultimately, you're going to take everything and put it together in a hierarchy of a document made in presentation software. We call it a slide doc. And the purpose of a slide doc is it's a visual brief that's very skimmable, has a really clear structure. And this is an example of one uh, that we made. And this is uh, from an IT person at a company proposing a recommendation about redesigning their IT infrastructure. So you could see it has a big idea, table of contents, an executive summary off to the right. And then it's supported by three big sections with supporting points over those sections. So what we do is we get into how people process information and how they follow a Z pattern and how we need to organize even our slide docs in a way that's skimmable. And we go through the actual structure of ways that you could structure a page and how you put everything together that you just learned. What's the action? How do you highlight the important information? How do you highlight the most important phrases? And what are the observations? And how do you make them pop out um, on an actual page? And so there's a little iconography that we um, use to teach you how to sketch out your own. So we have your, uh, a lot of sketching that happens where you actually are thinking through what is the most important thing on the page, what's less important, and what do I want to have stand out. And then we give you the final outcome of the De La Vega study as how Duarte um, express the whole thing. And, and there's an actual copy of the final in the back where you get to annotate it and you get to actually figure out how to solve it, and then you get to look at how we solved it as an example of how it could have turned out. And so at the end, there's a summary. And of course, you can have massive appendix in your slide docs. So in this course, you learn how to move from uh, making sense to making meaning. And by wrapping narrative, especially narrative around data in the shape of a story, it helps people understand it, helps them see the action that they're supposed to take, and it helps move them in a direction that makes decisions go faster and actions move faster as you influence through data. And data is always in service of action. We wouldn't fuss over and observe it if we didn't want somehow the world to be changed um, because of having known that data. And so this investment in how you communicate with data can help advance your career. And ultimately, uh, people will start to ask you to be a leader in the organization because you're so good at communicating data by wrapping it in story. So thank you. I hope you enjoyed that.